How about eating a mouthful of sand in a solo move against maybe the strongest block headwind I've ever seen throughout a stage consistently? Saudi's Tour Stage 3. So it's supposed to be a sprint stage. It ended up being a sprint stage, 181 k's long. The start was crosswind, cross headwind, and then it turned into just block headwind. We saw that with the wind at the start, and we were getting reports that the race had completely disintegrated. When images started with 50 k's to go, we saw Terje on Total Energy solo, but Seb PK, who voice of Race Radio, said from the gun, the race had completely split apart with Group 1 being 27, 25 riders. Santiago Botrago had been dropped, the leader of this race in the green jersey, so Bahrain had to work really hard to bring him back. And if you want to know like how hard this start was, Andrea Bagioli's power data, 306 watts normalized for the first 90 minutes, and he's about 61 kilograms. To only do 40 kilometers an hour normally if they're all going that hard in normal conditions they'd be going about 50 kilometers an hour plus and you can see when you when you see this you know what it is but we didn't really see too much of the crosswind chaos we saw more the groups coming back together when the images started bahrain had made it back with santiago Petraga. there was a second group but most of the gc men were in the front Caleb Ewan was in the front with Gronovec and, and all the other sprinters, Danny Van Poppel. Ewan was the big favourite for the stage. Lotus Sedal had cleaned up stage one in dominant fashion with their sprint train. But the problem for them was Rudiger Zelig, the second last man who'd done such a good job on stage one, had crashed out of Saudi Tour. We saw images of him eating his lunch looking all right, but banged up by the side of the road with 38 k's to go. So it would be the 2021 lead out for Lotto Sudal. While Santiago Petrago, he was just trying to not get on the wrong side of a split before the 2.9k 12% climb on stage four tomorrow. Otherwise, Anthony Turgi on Total Energy, he maybe, listen, maybe he was doing training, an interval before the classics where he'll be possibly a co-leader with Peter Sagan. He's a very strong classics rider, possibly the most miserable couple of hours solo that I've ever seen. They did 31 kilometers an hour for like the last three hours of this race with no climbing at all, just on a highway. So the wind was insane, just block headwind, and the peloton was seemingly content to let him dangle out front. And yeah, you see the wind literally picking up sand here, smacking him in the face with it and him shaking his head, stop pedaling, being like, I mean, sponsor exposure is worth something, but I'm not getting paid enough to get the Total Energy logo out here. And then they put up the placard and say, you're only two, you're two minutes ahead. He's like, that's too much. I've been doing, I've been trying to get caught for the last hour. Just please take me out of my misery out here. But yeah, the Peloton was going pretty, pretty slow. Start contrast from the first 50 minutes, especially, which was full gas. Uh, when you look at De Klerk's power data or speed compared to now, they, you know, races under control, groups together. And because it's not a tailwind, it's just block headwind, no teams are really going to try anything except quick step because they have Davide Ballerini. Yeah, he's quite fast. But you saw stage one, he was not competitive against Ewan or looking like being, beating Ewan in Gronovec. And as uh, Tergius took the first intermediate sprint bonuses of three seconds, then Charmig for uh, Uno X launched his sprint into a headwind really, really early. And the Bahrain rider who got sent by Petrago to take away seconds in the saddle just kind of mocked Rui Kosh and Charmig. <laughs> Pretty hilarious on the side, just like looking at them like, what are these two climbers doing? So it just got brought back. But as I said, Quickstep knew they weren't great for the sprint. So they tried what we expected and what we know Quickstep can do to split the race apart with Tim de Klerk, with Ballerini and co. And I think they made a mistake here. They got a little gap. They did catch some of the riders by surprise. The problem was they were trying to get all six or all five riders in the front group, and they didn't let the wheel go. If one of them, the second to last or last man, let the wheel go, maybe they'd get a gap here, but they didn't, and so it kind of went to nothing. And also the wind wasn't that favorable, but yeah, I feel like they're also a bit overly ambitious there as well. They tried a second time to counter and Petrago closed it in the saddle himself. So quick step trying to do what Lotto Sudal did in the Tour of Turkey back in the day for Greipel, trying to boss in the wind, but didn't work out. Coming into the sprint, two big contenders, Ewan and Gronovechen, and you see Roger Klugas here, 2.1 k's to go, ready to start at like about 1600 meters, which is what he did on stage one very well. 
in his third to last man role. But the problem is he's second to last man here. He's got the Du Bois Newman behind him. On the right hand side is the Gerald Steiner with Luca Mezget's last man, who did often a good job last year for no rewards for team bike exchange. And Kluger's already at the front. Next to Ryan Mullen, Ryan Mullen's the 1600 meter man for Bora Hansgrohe. They're going for Danny Van Poppel. It doesn't matter how strong you are, Casper Asker and whatever, 1600 meters, you're not going to be bringing the last man to 300 meters. And you see Bike Exchange start to swarm in front of Roger Kluger. And the curious thing to me is, and this is where the sprint is lost right here with about 700 meters to go, the boost gets pinched. And instead of Ewan, I, I thought for sure Ewan would be like, nah, Kluger's a sitting duck, he's done, which he is. Like, he, no one can pull from 1,600 to 400 usually in the wind or bring them up further. I thought they were going to switch on to the back of Groenewegen. Instead, Du Bois kind of, and Ewan stayed on Kluger's wheel or wanted to stay there on Kluger's wheel. Now, I, I can't really see anyone fighting off Ewan for Groenewegen's wheel right there. We didn't see the overhead. Now, maybe he did get pinched off by McLean, Arkea, Du Bois. Maybe they didn't. But when it cuts back, they're now getting seriously boxed in and it's looking very, very difficult for win for them to win this sprint. And Mezgetz is now first five wheels, starting his lead out now next to UAE, checking Groenewegen and is behind him. McLean's on the left-hand side. Du Bois cannot get out with Ewan behind him. And also Mezgetz is going to sprint to the left-hand barrier and just close off that space a little bit for Groenewegen to open up to the right-hand side. UAE, a complete mess. Gaviria has stayed on Ewan's wheel and his lead out, you can see in the top right, uh, kind of about 25 meters from him. And they'll look back and be like, where the hell is Fernando Gaviria? So UAE lead out's not looking too good. Mezgetz deposits Groenewegen with about eight seconds left to sprint, maybe even seven seconds. And in this uphill little kick, Groenewegen will be finishing off McClay, Van Poppel and Co. and Dainese on finishes like this. But this was the perfect representation. I tweeted it out straight afterwards. You see how fast Ewan finishes. Today we had the 2021 lead out. We had what often happened in 2021 for Ewan where he's the best sprinter here and he was fastest today. Stage one, Zelig, second man. That seemed to make all the difference. So it's not Lotto's fault. Zelig crashed. This is not the lead out they drew up. It's just the way it turned out today. The man I'm particularly happy for is the Slovenian, Luka Mezkes, actually. As I said, so many lead outs last year, really committed rider for bike exchange, and everyone seems happy for him to, to be the last man in a big sprint win and the first win for Groenewegen for bike exchange, Jayco, ahead of Dan McClay on Arkea Samzik, Caleb Ewan, very, very fast finishing third. Danny Van Poppel, Dainese, Gaviria, Blicker, Du Bois, Consoni, and Ballerini, 10th for Quickstep. That's why Quickstep were trying in the crosswinds before. They're not trusting Ballerini's sprint too much. But tomorrow, they have a very, very nasty climb, which is about 8Ks. It crests about 8Ks from the finish, 2.9Ks at 11.5%, 12%. We will see who has the best legs. It'll be probably between... Betrago, who looked very good on stage two, Maxim Van Gils, Sharmig, and a few others, because it is a while to the finish in the flat after that climb.